I really pay a lot of attention to the treatment's long-term possible toxicities, thinking about um, a person that may be using these therapies for really long periods of time. So when we're talking about cutaneous T-cell lymphoma or mycosis fungoides, uh, most children have relatively early stage disease. And while I might treat with light, I wouldn't use as much or for as long because I feel that they would be getting light for a long period of time. And when I'm talking about cutaneous B-cell lymphomas, um, I would, again, try and minimize the amount of systemic treatments that, that the person might have to use over and over again. Uh, when we're talking about the middle ground, I guess something like lymphomatoid papulosis, which happens a lot in younger people, again, I would try to minimize the systemic treatments that are used. Specifically, methotrexate would be a good example. Um, and only use it if I felt that it really was necessary in that young person. Fertility is something I think that it's important to think about for people who are in the period of life where they're playing, they're having kids or they're planning to have kids in the future and really how your disease and therapy would impact on that. Um, we can kind of divide therapies, I think, into um, a couple of different groups when we think about fertility. I think there's some therapies that we think have little effect on fertility. That would be like a topical steroid, ultraviolet light. Those wouldn't Im uh, impair your fertility. Uh, we may stop those treatments uh, while you, someone is pregnant um, just because it's not well studied. Um, but in general, those are treatments that are very safe. There's a group of therapies that would potentially uh, be dangerous or damaging to an unborn baby, or we wouldn't want them in the body at the time that someone conceived, and those are some of the mild systemic therapies. Those are not therapies that would impair your fertility long-term after you're on those drugs, but they're things where we would strongly advise against conceiving a child while you're on them. They might make it difficult to carry a child. They might cause damage to an unborn baby, and you usually need to be off those therapies for some amount of time afterwards before we think it's safe to conceive. And we think those times off of therapy are months to a year or so. Those are often the mild systemic therapies, things like uh, Targretin, uh, which is something that we call teratogenic. So retinoids um, can damage an unborn child. So there's very strong cautions against conceiving a child or taking those medications when someone is pregnant. Um, we don't think they cause any long-term damage that after, after you're off those medicines, you couldn't then get pregnant or then carry a child or then conceive a child. But we really would strongly discourage anyone from conceiving a child or carrying a child while they're on those medications because they, they could cause severe damage. I think oral methotrexate uh, in the doses that we give for cutaneous lymphomas similarly falls into that category. Uh, that's a medication that could temporarily in, in impair fertility or could cause damage to sperm or an egg or an unborn child, and we wouldn't want people to use those when they're conceiving or carrying a child. Once you stop the, the methotrexate, it's unlikely that that drug would cause long-term fertility issues, at least in the low doses that we use for skin lymphomas. So it's usually something if you stop those medications, you could still conceive a child later. Um, other medications we use, like the histone deacetylase inhibitors, um, those are very new medicines. They've not been studied at all, of course, in, in pregnancy. And the way those medications work by altering gene expression or changes in the DNA, uh, it, it would be a very bad idea to, to get pregnant or conceive a child or carry a child while, while you're on those medications. That being said, as far as we know, those medications are unlikely to cause long-term or permanent infertility. Um, Long-term or permanent infertility is really something seen with some of the stronger chemotherapies, particularly combination chemotherapies or treatments like stem cell transplant. And in those settings, when you get stronger chemotherapies or stem cell transplant, there's a real chance that you would become infertile permanently. Not a guarantee for any of those things, but, but a high chance. Or if the thought is to be on these medications for a long time, uh, often with skin lymphomas, there's an opportunity to think about banking sperm or, or freezing uh, embryos or saving eggs ahead of time. If it looks like you'll be on therapy, that would make that difficult.